it up for him. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, starting your day with us. Uh, we, we are happy to be with you. Uh, as you said, my name is Brandon Catt, and I'm from Bloomberg East High School, which we're located about 20 miles west of Chicago uh, in a high school there. And so I just want to jump right in because we have so many awesome stories and things to share with you. Uh, and I brought eight of my students with me from Chicago because uh, I, I come to these conferences at times and I listen to people talk and I'm like, uh-huh, I want to hear your kids say that. Uh, and so they're here, uh, you can ask them. They're very honest, brutally honest, so they'll give you everything you want to know. Before we get started though, I just want to give credit where credit's due. I have some amazing collaborators in this world of hip hop and music ed. So in Illinois, uh, we know of three high schools, two of which are in my district, Glenbard North and our school, Glenbard East. And then Lane Tech High School, which is where Miles is at down here at the, the bottom of the screen, that are having hip hop as part of their music curriculum during the school day. So we're, we're kind of a new thing, we're trying to get it. English has taken off before us in music. They have lots of hip hop English classes, but in music we're, we're lagging behind with getting it in our curriculum. So we're always looking for collaborators. And so Miles and, and us are, are collaborating at the bottom. Adam Cruz, Dr. Cruz, and Professor Holden from the University of Illinois are doing a lot of incredible work and research in this field. So if you're looking to dive deeper, look for their stuff and you can, you can grab even more. They're up in our building a lot doing research with us and they actually just got a grant passed for the Hip Hop Express, which is a bus that's gonna be a fully equipped uh, studio on the inside so they can pull it up to a school, park it in front of the school and now there's a studio oh, there wow. with tech, you know, tech issues there. So yeah. they're doing some really cool work too. So I just wanted to mention them. And then my colleagues and partners who are teaching hip hop in our school. So uh, Andrew Packer uh, started as a band and percussion guy, converted now he's a hip hop guy too, uh, and doing piano. And Scott Grigoletto at our sister school at Columbia North, percussion orchestra person, but now he's teaching hip hop as well, right? It's we're music teachers. Uh, and then my colleague Marissa McLean, who's here with us, uh, she is a choir director by trade, but now is doing an after school uh, club where she's doing music collaboration work where students are, are pairing together uh, producers with like, I play the trombone, oh, I produce a beat, oh, I write lyrics, and now we're creating our own music after school. So she's doing this like music collaboration work uh, in our building. So I just want to mention these really incredible educators. But these are the guys that I'm most impressed by. So I'm going to have them quickly introduce themselves so you have a sense of who they are and their musical backgrounds. All right. Uh, my name is Aaron Larry. I'm a sophomore in Glenbard East High School. Um, prior, outside of school, the only lessons that involved music were I took drumming lessons in fourth grade. Um, hello, my name is Ethan Bond. I'm a senior at Glenbard East High School. Um, prior to taking hip hop, the only music class that I took was the one I was required to take. And um, I played the trombone in fourth and fifth grade, but I found no interest in it, and I, so I quit. production to me and I had no other choice to take because it was just interesting. Hello, I'm Kalia Donald. I'm a senior and my musical journey began when I was in seventh grade. I took choir as like, it was a club out to, um, after school and so I've been doing the choral things uh, ever since up until now and I'm involved in the after school. Okay. Hi, my name is Tania Evans. I'm a junior. Um, I started choir when I was in My name is Taylor Cozio. I'm a sophomore at Glenbar East. My musical background started in middle school. I took choir um, after school, and then I quit because I fainted on stage, and Marissa McLean is the one who caught me from So we hear that choir directors, I fainted, so I quit. Uh, <laughs> right? um, I, I'm a scaredy cat, I'll admit it. And then um, freshman year, first semester, I took hip hop production, and then second semester, I took piano. My name is Victor Marquez. I'm a junior at Lombard East High School. Um, my musical background, uh, I've been doing choir since second grade. I'm still doing it now. And then I took a hip hop production my sophomore year. Hi, my name is Keaton Roberts and I'm a sophomore. And my musical journey started in seventh grade when I played bass and orchestra, but I quit in the start of high school because I felt like I didn't belong. And then I saw hip hop production. Hi, my name is Daniel Stoyano. I'm a junior, and um, I played the cello in fourth grade orchestra, and I absolutely hated it, so I quit. <laughs> um, but outside of school, I was learning uh, 
piano and guitar since I was two. And as a sophomore, I took uh, hip hop production. So we are in our, thank you guys. Uh, first of all, would you welcome them to Orlando? <laughs> outside of my own classroom, but what are we doing as a program? How are we serving our students? We have a thriving music program at Columbia East with band and choir and orchestra, and music theory, uh, piano and guitar in our curriculum. But yet, uh, we hear from counselors every day when they would say, all these students like music, they talk about liking music, but they don't like any of our like 30 course offerings that we have. So what's going on with that? And so we started talking about it, thinking about it, uh, and realized that you know hip hop is the number one most consumed music in the world, and is highly consumed in our school, and will continue to be and has been for a long time. And why are we not you know grappling with that? And sometimes we say things and try to tease ourselves and say, oh, but I did a song from Hamilton and choir, so we're doing hip hop. No, uh, that's, that's not that's not what we're doing. So that was really important to us to to talk to the students and find out is that of interest to you. We quickly found that it was, and so uh, just to give you a little sense of this. As a department chair, as you know, everyone wants data at an administrative level, and so I'm like, how can I look at data to inform our decision? So this is our our uh, our background of our, our students by ethnicity and race in 2015 when we started this conversation, and then that was our music department background. So you can see 46% uh, of the school is white, uh, but in our music department, we were 56% was there. And then we had huge discrepancies in other areas too, where we weren't far off, but it was like, we have some work to do. Because our music program should probably reflect our building when every kid gets to choose to take what music course they want to take. So that's where we came up with the idea of starting these courses. So we have hip hop production one and two. Um, we had, yeah, had to figure out the name and how to make all that work to where students knew what it was and how to take it. So it's not a dance class and it's not this and it's not that. Um, and so we work with students every step of the way on how to construct this and how to build this program. Uh, Hip Hop 2 is repeatable, so a student can take eight full semesters of Hip Hop while they're at, in our program. So they can keep doing it and keep growing their portfolio and their music while they're there. I would love to talk to you, I could talk to you for days about how we got that approved and how we maneuvered the, you know, the bureaucratic channels of, of school. Um, and if you want to read more about it, um, Janet Barrett is uh, doing an article on us uh, called The Policy at the Intersection of Curriculum and Music Teacher Agency. It's going to be an MEJ this spring, so you can read that and be like, oh yeah, that was that, those people we saw, that's about us. Um, and I also would be happy to just answer those questions. But because it's today and these guys here, I'm going to breeze past that. But this is now where we are in 2019. These, I just got this data yesterday. So our school is changing in a few years, which is one thing to kind of look at. Um, we have a, a large Latinx population uh, that we really haven't been serving uh, in our program as well as we should, and we're trying to figure out how to do that more. On our African American students, uh, now you can see in the hip hop class alone, uh, we have an African American and Latinx Thai majority, and then this up here in the top right, that's our white students that are there, and they're about thirds uh, in that class, right? In our music department, we are still making inroads, but we have caught up considerably with our Latinx population and we're equal um, with our, uh, to the building, to the music department with our African American population. That, that quickly changed uh, for us. And that's really exciting because now when we're talking in department meetings and we have students working in our programs, it's all of our students from our building, not just some of our students from our building. And that's something that we're interested in continuing to think about other offerings and what we do. As far as our, our low income students, uh, you can see this is the school's low income status. The music department, but then in our hip hop, it's 50% of our students are there. So we offer at Lumber East for students to take band, choir, orchestra at any grade level. They can start as a junior on a trombone. We will provide instruments and make that happen. So that we tried to shut down every barrier we could, yet there's still something going on inside the mind that says, I can't do band because that's expensive. I can't do orchestra because I, I, I can't afford that. 
And so but this is opening the doors. Everyone knows that we're just coming into the studio and producing together. And so now all of a sudden we're seeing uh, a different uh, portion of our population, which we're really excited about. And as you're hearing, some of them then are pivoting in and taking some of these other music classes and exploring things that maybe they started before and then, and then passed. So the biggest things I just want you to know is that across two years of this being, as we're in our second year, 159 students in our district have taken a music class now for the first time at the high school level. So without this course, we would not have service 159 kids. But now 159 students are in our programs, in our department, with our teachers, in our wing, in our community, and that's a good thing. Uh, we, we know that when we have students with us, they, they are successful. And we're seeing now that these students are doing the same thing with us, whoever they are. And it's the only in our entire school system, our, our majority African-American course, where the majority of the students taking it across our two building, or across two of our four buildings that are offering it, two of our buildings aren't offering it yet, are African-American students, which is really exciting and tells us something about schooling and what we have going on in our district, and it's informing some other conversations and discussions that we have needed to have and now are having. So that's just some steps. So we got through that process, course was approved, proposed, students are in it, and then I was literally like, you know, the month before classes started last year going, um, now what do I do? Like, we <laughs> have it now, I'm not, I'm not a hip hop expert by any means, but someone's gotta be in this room and doing this well and, and giving my all, and so I, we decided this is the whole point of what we're doing. The whole point of the class is to speak our truth. That's it, it's not music making, it's to speak our truth. And then we do that through our music making, but it's more about us socially and emotionally speaking about who we are. I hope that you hear that with some of the things that they're talking about. So how we did this is in this, these four ways. And so we're gonna kind of dive into each of these and explain what we're doing. So the first is bringing down stereotypes and me as who I am, I have to come into the room and admit that while I listened to hip hop in the 90s, that's not what they're listening to and I can't talk to them about the music that they are listening to. Now I can, because I, I consume it more, but at that time I didn't. And so I wanted them to know that it wasn't gonna be like, you know, the brakes on the bus, and we're, you know, or in 1994, this happened in this place. Like, it's not a history class, it's not that, it's about really living, about speaking our truth and using the art form to do it. So I wanted to show the music that I was writing, and that's what this is. And it was all about me talking about me, right? I don't have the right to talk about um, living on the streets because I've never lived on the streets. And if they have it, they can't talk about that either. They can talk about something that's true to them. So I'm talking about work life balance, which I'm guessing some of you can also relate to. All through my life, I've worked and perspired to get to a spot where I'm the one I had. Ten years ago, I made it, and I hope I'm in my by those in the choir who have all inspired me each and every day to push in the fire of your. So you've got to get the idea, right? So I'm showing them that, and they'll they'll give me some grief, and I say, look, this is where I am today, and I'm proud of where I am today. Tomorrow, I'll be a better producer. I'll be a better lyricist. I'll be a better rapper. So I got to work on that. But you guys help me do it. The second thing about breaking the stereotypes is bringing in actual artists to work with them, not just me trying to figure things out. So we took them on a field trip into the city of Chicago, went to the University of Illinois at Chicago, and this is uh, FinDot, uh, who is a Chicago up and coming artist, and FinDot worked with our students, sat there, talked to them, answered questions, took tons of pictures with them, now has our sticker, and it was awesome, they were saying, hey, I saw FinDot online, and his, his, our sticker is on his, on his laptop, oh. it's there. Uh, and so he's now part of our culture, and we now know him. The best thing that someone ever said to me, Lamont Holden from U of I was, um, name for me uh, a really good violin teacher, a really good violinist in your community, and I can name him like 20. Name for me a really good piano person in your, and I did that, a harpist. I'm like, oh, I got those. What about a hip hop artist? As nothing. I was like, um, I think there's this one guy here. He's like, he's like, they're there, and that community is no different, so go find that community of people, and you need to embrace those people and make them a part of your culture. It was, it was a light bulb went off. So that's when we started looking at Edwin Bernice, like who are the people? We have producers, but our assistant principal of athletics is a ghostwriter. He like writes lyrics and sends them off. Didn't know that, I had taken the time to figure that out. And now it's like we gotta find our hip hop community that already exists um, in, our, in our set. Okay, the other thing, those guys are coming here. There. Uh, the other thing is we have to break the stereotypes of our community. 
So when people hear hip hop and they think profanity, vulgarity, they think all of these things and they don't think about the art form and the avenue to speak truth. So we had a, a children's fine arts fair, and so we had a hip hop table there where, like I'm guessing, you know, that, that I know her mom particularly, I know what her views are about hip hop as a form, but now here's this girl who's producing beats just like some of you were doing as, as you walked in. That's a quick and easy thing that we're making authentic music right away immediately without having to sit and figure it out. Just like, oh, I can click buttons. Oh, I see how that works. And now we're using beat sequencers to do that with these guys to try to break the stereotype of our community and what their thoughts are about. <laughs> and then it takes us to this, which is how I teach flow. So instead of being able to come up with your own lyrics, the way to teach flow, I found a long time ago, is get a beat and then grab children's books, which my, my daughter doesn't like because I take all her books away. And then start to do this. So you're going to do it. This isn't a sit back session. I have to be vulnerable, you do too. So here's a beat that uh, Daniel produced uh, right uh, coming up. Yeah, this beats his, his beat. You guys take these books, or if you can't get a book, there's something on the screen, and I want you to start working on your flow right now. Someone's gonna produce. Anybody want an elemental beat? And here's the big chicken chicken on the phone. Anybody want it? Dr. Corey, you want it? So, you guys come help. Make sure they're doing it. So just practice. Keep going, Goldie. Opportunities for me to kind of like 
get my professional standpoint as an artist better. So I collaborated with a professional graphic designer and we had a lot of back and forth about, she wasn't doing what I wanted. I kept telling her to fix shapes of like, cause the original, this logo is based off of our music department's logo. Which is um, the G and then this is a piano keyboard, right? Yeah. With an E in it and the piano. And that's the department logo. And they're like, let's take what's there and remake it, which is hip hop. So if you, it's a record, and then those are sound waves, pretty much. Rem record, that's our like studio name. Uh, so basically the graphic designer kept making it the G shape, and I was like, a record isn't in the shape of a G, a record is a circle. And I remember it took us like four or five emails to get that like squared away. Yeah. So basically then, it went over to, there was a giant back wall with pictures of white classical pianists, white classical artists. And we decided if this space is truly gonna be about hip hop, we need to make it about hip hop. So me and my friend Harry again came up with this. And uh, can we paint on the wall? I'm sorry. Uh, let me ask my boss, but I think yes. Uh, so it got approved the day after you asked and we got started. And so that, it, it's been more complete. So I've basically done most of the painting on my own and I, absolutely love art and I just want to say thank you to Mr. Cat because before hip hop production I would miss about like 15 to 30 days a semester because that's how much I disliked school. I was never at school, my grades would slip and then first semester freshman year rolls around I missed zero days of school because I refused to miss a day of hip hop. Awesome. So, thinking about, again, the broader community. Okay, we've got to think, how do we get out into the world? So I brought in Lamont uh, from U of I. He was in Atlanta for reasons. So we flew him in from Atlanta. He DJ'd our pep rally. So this is him at our homecoming pep rally just like a couple months ago. And then I'm like, well, wait a minute. So he taught in our class. He's a guest artist in our class for, for two days, which are such a school. Then we used him and we DJ'd everything. When his kids came in for his school at the beginning of the day, outside of school, we DJ'd that. Lunches, DJ'd all the lunches. At the football game, in the stands, we put a turntable up uh, with uh, our logo on that tent. Football game's going on, this is the student section, he's in the middle of it, DJing the game, right? So we were like, no, this is our culture, this is who we are, and we're gonna put it right in your face so everyone can see it. And Lamont had a blast, so it was super fun. So then the last piece of this is then to create a supportive culture of honesty and respect. That's the most important part, is about can we have these conversations in a way where we're gonna talk about very heavy topics, race, uh, poverty, um, racism uh, is, a, is a thing that we talk about in our building a lot. This year, the kids are talking, like the class I just taught a couple days ago before flying here, we were all on this thing about um, schooling and how schooling's not serving us. So that's what this class is focusing on. So the point of it is, is that I don't have the set curriculum of these are the topics we discuss. Instead, what we have are these things called daily contemplations. And so every student in the class leads a daily contemplation uh, and when they do that, then that is open forum for discussion following. Sometimes they take four minutes, sometimes they take three days. Uh, and I just have to have all of our producing skills that I'm gonna be teaching on hold until we can get it done. And that's how the curriculum works. And so every student gets through that, so it's about two thirds of the semester to get through these daily contemplations where they're thinking about a lot of thoughts. That then informs their writing for their final project, which is to make their own song, so they can inform it on the topics that they're passionate about. Um, and those topics, Vary, which you'll see here in a little bit. But I'm gonna let these guys actually do a daily contemplation with you so you kind of get a sense of it. And this is the first one I do with the students, but they're gonna show you uh, how this goes. So basically, a daily contemplation is we either look at a quote or we watch a video or a picture, you know, something like that. And we have like an open discussion about it. You give your opinion about it. And then the other people in the class will usually give their input on it. You know, we're really respectful about it. And it's really, um, it's really just like a good way communicating with everyone else in the class and we like get to deeper thinking about it. So um, would anyone like to read this quote if I'm not a mess? Right. Oh, you already participated. Uh, teacher, all right, cool, thanks, one of you. The first is so powerful, it is in his face and goal. It can make a criminal look like he's the victim and make the victim look like he's the criminal. This is the press, an ir irresponsible press. Loving the people who are being oppressed and loving the people who are doing the oppression. I think you're good with that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, try the mic. I think it's working. Yeah. Okay. 
So this is also a picture that we did on the first day. Um, can anybody tell me the differences between the two pictures? recorded through the wire. He wrapped it just a few weeks after his infamous car accident while his jaw was completely wired shut. It's not crisp and clear. So this is going to be about hip-hop itself, the art form, of creating it, techniques, and some people do things like that. So then we have things like this. Suicide is an especially prominent topic in hip-hop right now, with rappers of all different lanes expressing their views on mental health. Recently, Logic performed a suicide prevention track, 1-800-273, Bird saying of contemplating death over a family relationship on his hit XR Twilight. Most recently, Chester Bennington of Linkin Park committed suicide, and former collaborator Jay Z spoke to Rap Radar on the effect of suffering while in plain sight. That's not normal for 10,000, 20,000 people to be like screaming at you. Mm. It's not a normal thing to deal with. So then you add that on top, so now you gotta start masking the pain. <laughs> because you can't let all these people see. Like, it's hard enough to talk to your family. So this then opens a dialogue that's so important for us to have, right? And we're not averting any of it. We go right down the road and have a conversation. My job is to try to shove as much as possible and then just help keep the conversation going and help kind of add, well, what about this? What do you think about that? And we'll have strong disagreements about things in class, but because we built a community, it's a really safe space to have that conversation and I've had AD's teachers come into the room to watch, and one of them did a, like, a guest lesson on like um, satire and hip hop, like SNL skits, and did the thing with that, which is cool, because they want to see what's going on, because they see the writing that's coming out of the class, and they're like, wait a minute, why is that writing there? And his comment to me as an instructional coach was, he's like, Brandon, this is some of the best conversation that I've seen, and I teach AP, like all these AP research classes. He's like, and the reason why is because in AP research, there isn't, our school is not in the room talking. But in this room, our school is in the room talking. And he asked us, he was like, how many of you taken AP? And they raised their hand and went through it. And then we realized that a lot of people had been told at some point in time that they wouldn't take AP, AP or that's not quite for them. Yet they're having a conversation at the level that this teacher says he has in his room every day, if not better. And so that kind of an empowerment for a student is really, is really important. Um, we also had students who then have a place to share and then we can get them paired with social workers where they hadn't been talking about things before. So on the last day of our class, first semester, the first time we did this, one of the students said, asked, she was like, can I talk about my life a little bit? I, I, wanna, I wanna get something out. I said, sure. And she stood up and talked to us about how she had been sexually abused as a child all the way through it. She said, I've never talked about it before, but I want to now get up and like, I wanna tell my story because there's people who need to hear it and little girls need to hear that it's okay to talk about this. And 
And so she started sharing about that. Another student in the class, uh, his final project, he spoke his truth through his music. And as we started talking about it, I didn't hear anything about this the entire semester. Um, and then we get to the uh, end and we're listening to his track. And I'm like, what's this, what's this about? Talk to me about it. And it sounded at first like a little surface level, but I wouldn't have like dove, dove in. Surface level, it seemed like it was about like breaking up with a girl or something. And then as we started talking about it a little more, his sister uh, was killed in a car accident two years prior. And he was working through that by writing these lyrics and wanted to share it with his family as a way for him to cope. And, and he used that as a mechanism to do it, but hadn't talked about it with any of us. And, and didn't want to share it in that way, but then was open and wanted to talk about it in a different way. And that goes back to our heart of it. I don't care if the production doesn't get done or it's the best quality, it's about speaking our truth. It's about having a platform for us to like be human beings together. That's the point for us. And that's always how, that, that has to be our number one question. Did we talk about ourselves? Or are we comfortable with our, our own skin? So these data contemplations are huge uh, to make that happen. And then we get the results and we get to see all the products that they make. So the first one is Aaron. So this is Aaron as a freshman, not Aaron as a sophomore that you see in front of you now. And Aaron in class, uh, I, I will also say, just to keep in mind, daily contemplations, these guys can speak to this. A lot of people in the room are producing with headphones on while we're doing daily contemplations. Yeah. On their phones, playing a game, and I just let it go. Now the teacher inside of me is like, oh, I wanna like micromanage all this, and you shouldn't have your phone out, and this is this. But if I keep doing, or this kid's up and walking around, and goes out and does this, and I let it happen within a realm of what I'm comfortable with. Not every, you know, and the other teachers who teach a class has different levels of comfort on how to do this. But the point being is that in that way, those students feel like they're not being nagged for something else. I will also tell you that nearly every day of this semester, I've had a dean's pass pulling students out. While they're making incredible work with me, I have to then send them to the dean's office for something else, which has allowed me to then have a conversation with their dean's office about, can we talk about this microcosm of what we're doing right here? You know, and listening to students say things like, um, I get frustrated that every time a uh, dean comes up to me and asks me if I know this person, I don't know every black kid in the school just because I'm black. You know, and, and uh, having them say, I'm the only black student in my AP class, and every time I offer an answer, everyone checks my work. But we don't do that for the other people in our group. And I hadn't realized it until we started talking about this. And that bothers me, and I need to do something about it. Or someone else saying, we are gonna have this discussion in history, in our AP history, and we started going down the road, but then we went back the other way because we had to get done with what we needed to go, and here we just keep talking, and I have a place to talk about it. So those things are really important for us to keep in mind and remember that uh, we've been learning, that we were not anticipating when we first started this conversation, but it's become so much more important. So Aaron, back to him, is a student who was producing most of the time and not paying attention to the other things, and he's a freshman. Uh, and then he wanted to make songs that were about not his truth, but other people's truth. And so he would write things about you know, violence and th things that I'm like, you can't talk about this, this isn't you. Uh, and so finally I'm like, talk about you and let's see what we get. And this is what we get. And he's a great rapper, and we found that out through his yeah. right, thank you. This, this sounds like a freshman me talking about things that are <clears throat> I got a cold rose and I said, but I got this right here. I got this massage. I be yo, drinking the women in the kitchen. Wait, cooking our rice in the kitchen. Yeah, I ain't that teacher, but listen. Yo, there's some people always fishing. Yeah, all this trip on me, but my wrist never listen. Uh, all y'all true friends don't trust them, they sneak listen. Wait, shooting your shot, but you missing. No, shooting my shot, it's a green. No, coming to shoot and I need no, number two, I'm talking about. So, yeah, I'm hella hungry, give me another flow with a coke bro. Yeah, I'm not expert, I'll tell to call you bro. Put the ones that know it's a but I'm missing, yeah. Put your phone, take a picture, yeah. When it's done, add a filter, yeah. Post that on the gram. Refresh the page, see the spam. Run my light out the suits. I ain't talking about your next and ham. Wait, I didn't do nothing. You don't give it up for him. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So she stayed, and I could see her struggling, because she was having all those conversations we're talking about in her AP classes at a really high level. She's now at the University of Illinois, like in engineering or something, yeah, and, and doing her thing there. And so, but she, her friends that are in the room, she's hearing the things that they're going through, and she's trying to figure out how does she relate to them, and how, what is she, how does she help them with this. And so she ended up writing um, this song, and she's she's like, please please don't keep playing that at things uh, because it's, it's not a good song. And I'm like, Hannah, it's an amazing song. I get the production level is not what we just heard from Aaron, but the text is incredible and it's so honest. And I asked these guys, I'm like, should we play this? And I was like, uh, how do we not play this? You know, because it's, it is a microcosm of what we're talking about. So here it is. This is maybe if a white girl says that you'll listen. Essentially means the students all are like, oh, I want like a, 
uh, full of G type B, and then they go find that B. So she's got it to where we can use that for now, but in the class next semester, she's gonna produce her own track uh, to go with her own lyrics. It'll be fully original.
brother, some of his old friends who invite you to perform nope. their songs. A loan from our program, right? So finding a loan from Glimmerdees who didn't have this when they were as students. He's going back and he's like, let's let's look at the Glimmerdees hip hop community that I was talking about before. And you knew him, I didn't know him. Now you Yeah, so um, I got them to perform. Uh, I was going to perform, but I was like, nah, I should produce some of those. You danced. I did dance. I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got a couple more students I believe to perform. And then, biggest of all, I got famous Chicago dancer slash rapper Lil Chemo to come and perform, which I'm like, I've reached out to every Chicago rapper, dancer that I can name. And how did you do that? Literally through social media, preferably Instagram, emailing their uh, managers. I was going like, I was doing it all. Um, and he was the, he was probably the last person I did um, contact and he messaged me that same day, right back. And then um, on top of messaging me, he called me. I was like, I'm speaking a little chemo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So um, I got him to come, he came. Um, they actually packed, packed um, the place pretty good. Yeah. Um, and that was, that was the, like me doing that and producing all of it and hosting it. It gave me much more confidence because I didn't think I could go about confronting people and talk or at least toast anything. But it also, um, it also helped me to be um, what's the word we said um, encouraged, um, what's motivated, empowered. Empowered. Yeah. empowered. That's the word. I'm <laughs> Um, it made me be empowered to actually want to try more, and it made me feel like there's something I actually found that I'm very good at, and that's producing and hosting things. So after that, like my grades were going up, I was doing um, better in school than I was before, and now um, I, I really just find a lot of interest, and I want to be a producer soon, and I want to host a lot of things. <laughs> uh, so that's all due to Mr. Cat, who I didn't even know until April. <laughs> and once again, I'd like to thank him for that. And yeah, that's about it. I will say, yeah, give it up for the first time. Next year, I'm finna grind all night long. 
9103, these and a freestyle about this is a song. Nine.
So I find that with the students who are struggling to get the production stuff going, we stick pretty easy, and once you're ready to go, just let them fly. There you go. Can I ask one more question I'm super curious about? Um, so um, I don't want to you know, trigger you to the stereotype that profanity is like all hip hop has been, right. but how does profanity limit what you can listen to and experience in your classroom? I mean, because it is definitely true that some great hip hop albums, yeah. some of the Kendrick latest stuff, are, are like, there's a lot of it in there. So, yeah. does that limit you? Okay. Yeah, so, basically, um, so we asked this question.
our, our label stickers. Please take it. We like seeing it in other places uh, and get our, our word out there. But um, would you all thank them for?